In this video, we will cover mini-batch gradient descent. It will allow you to train models with more data. Until now, we have been using every sample for gradient descent. In mini-batch gradient descent, we use a few samples at a time for each iteration. It's helpful to think about it as if you are minimizing a mini-cost function or the total loss. When we use all the samples in the dataset, we call it an epoch. Here is epoch 1. Here is epoch 2. When we use all the samples, it's called batch gradient descent, where one iteration equals one epoch. We use a few samples to calculate the cost. It's sometimes referred to as the total loss. Let's use the following boxes to represent the gradient of the total loss at each iteration. Let's do the first epoch. For the first iteration, we use the first two samples. For the second iteration, we use the second two samples. For the third iteration, we use the last two samples. Therefore, with a batch size of three to complete one run or epoch through the data, it took three iterations. For the second epoch, it will also take three iterations. In this case, our batch size is two. It only takes two iterations to complete one epoch. For the second epoch, it also takes two iterations. Let's see how we can determine the number of iterations for different batch sizes and epochs. To obtain the number of iterations, we simply divide the number of training examples by the batch size. Let's verify that. For a batch size of one, we get six iterations. We can verify this pictorially. We see for each iteration, we use one sample. For a batch size of two, it takes three iterations. We can verify this pictorially. Each iteration uses two samples. Finally, for a batch size of three, it takes two iterations. Again, we can verify this pictorially. We calculate the total loss before each iteration. It's a noisy version of the cost. At the end of each epoch, we calculate the accuracy on the validation data. We repeat the process for the next iteration. If the accuracy decreases, we have trained too much. This is called overfitting. We will talk about this later. We'll discuss softmax and multi-class classification. Before we continue, let's review the argmax function. The argmax function returns the index corresponding to the largest value in a sequence of numbers. Here, the largest value in Z is 100, and the corresponding index is 0. Thus, the argmax function will return 0. In this example, the largest value of z is 10, and the corresponding index is 7. So the argmax function will return a 7. Logistic regression can be used for two classes, but how about if we wanted to solve the following three-class problem? Consider the following images and their label. We have y equals 0 as cat, y equals 1 for dog, we have y equals 2 for fish. Instead of using one plane to classify the data, we will use one plane for each class. In this case, we have three equations representing three classes, but we can generalize to any number of classes. We can also use the graph to represent equations. In this case, nodes are representing the different components of X. We add nodes for each output Z. The edges represent the different learnable parameters with subscripts indicating the dimension. This is the plane where Z equals zero. The line is where the decision plane intersects with the plane z equals zero. We can overlay our sample images. We see the lines split the classes. If the input is in the blue region, the value of z zero corresponding to the equation zero is the largest. This is where the blue plane has a higher value than the other regions. Therefore, anything in this region will be in class zero. If the input is in the red region, the value of Z1 corresponding to equation 1 is the largest. Therefore, anything in this region will be in class 1. If the input is in the yellow region, the value of Z2 corresponding to equation Z is the largest. Therefore, anything in this region will be in class 2. Just a note, the yellow line we see is where the plane is greater than 0. The yellow region is where the yellow plane is larger than the blue and red region. We can now use the planes to classify this unknown point. We calculate the output of the plane and apply the argmax function. The result is class one. The reason the function is called softmax, since the actual distances, that is dot products for each input vector with the parameters, is converted to probabilities using the following probability functions. Similar to logistic regression, the process of classification is similar. But we use the output of the probability 
we see the result is class 1. Training for softmax is almost identical to logistic regression. Finally, there are other ways to create a multi-class classifier. Sometimes softmax is not the best option for multi-class classification. We will not go into the details, but there are several other methods to convert a two-class classifier to multi-class classifier. They include one versus rest, one versus one. These methods are used for support vector machines.